good time to do that. I think the sociologists of our time are telling us something that uh, we've probably known or thought about a, a long time. Uh, they're saying that much of our social and moral demise in this country, in the world, is a result of fatherless homes where the father isn't present. CBS television had a special on some time ago titled Dropout Dads. And uh, the information that I gathered from that was on the average, four of, out of ten homes in our nation, uh, the father is missing. In some cases due to an untimely death, but in most cases due to divorce and separation by the parents, where dad just drops out of the picture. Or women, uh, usually teenage women, uh, young women, uh, have children without the benefit of marriage and work at raising their children without the benefit of a male model or a role model at the home. But there's some other very disturbing things. 80% of crimes committed by teens and young adults come from fatherless homes. Their findings show that a young man growing up in a home where there's no male role model usually has a very poor self-image. Also, he often has an inner rage that the male-dominated society he finds himself in. So when he sees a police officer, he has a, he has a negative feeling, or even a school teacher, or in some cases, even a shop clerk, or someone uh, in, in a store who charges him for whatever he buys, has an inner rage. He doesn't understand it, but he, it affects how he looks at the world. To me, it was heartrending, really, to listen to the interview that the reporter was making with some of the 17 and 13-year-old fellows that were without a father at home. One young fellow, one young lad said, even if my dad didn't want to live with us, I wish I could see him once a month. Then I would know I belong to someone. Another said, I know I have a dad out there somewhere. I wish he was in jail so I could at least visit him once in a while. Well, that was a disturbing report. On the other hand, we know there are homes where uh, the father's there, but he's so busy doing other things that in a sense he's not really there. His business, his work, his job, or even his sports or things that he's interested in often keep him really interacting and spending time with his children. There was a time long, long ago when my heart ached and my eyes burned when one of my little girls, I won't tell you which one, said to me, Dad, you seem to be there for everyone else except us kids. Well, the role of father in the home cannot be overstressed, of course, especially if he's a man seeking to be a man of God and raising his family up to honor God in the way he lives. Well, this brings me to a very important scripture, and I invite you to turn to it with me. 2 Corinthians, 3rd chapter, verse 17 through 18. This is Paul writing about what goes on in our lives when we come to know Christ. In verse 17, he begins, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, with unveiled faces, all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. You get the idea here from that text that it is our role, it's our experience, to reflect, to reflect the people we meet, the people around us, the people who know us, the glory of the Lord. And the Lord is ever increasing that ability within us. When we speak about the glory of the Lord, I just ask someone, how do you give God glory? This person thought a while, I think he's right. He said, well, he 
and say all the good things about God that you know. You tell people what God is doing in your life, the good things. You're giving glory to God. And so, when we are called upon to reflect the Lord's glory, we are reflecting who the Lord is. We let others know by our behavior, by what we do, by what we say, how we live, the Lord's glory to them. As I do every morning when I get out of bed, I go into the bathroom and I stand before the bathroom mirror and I spend some time preparing my face for others to see. This morning when I went in and I looked in the mirror, I saw my father looking back at me. I smiled and he smiled. Um, now I know it wasn't my father, but I resemble my father. I reflect my father in my appearance many times. In fact, recently I was, well not too recently, a number of weeks ago, I was in my hometown, uh, which happens to be Segretown, Pennsylvania. Uh, most people think I came from Meadville. I did pastor a church there for 12 years. But my hometown is really Segretown, a little town, a little one horse town, not about three miles from where I grew up as a boy. And when I went in this, I went in a hardware store. And to my surprise, I met a man about my age, who looked at me, and I recognized him. I didn't know he was the proprietor of the store, but I looked at him and I knew him right away. And he looked at me and he said, well, hello, Ivan. <laughs> Wait a minute, I said, uh, Ivan was my father. Oh, yeah, he said, oh, yeah, I know, I know, he said, boy, you look a lot like your dad. <laughs> so I do, I reflect. Uh, in appearance, my father, not totally, uh, thank goodness, and uh, uh, this is what we're called to do with Christ, not reflect how Christ looks, because we don't know how he looks. We have no way of knowing how Christ looks. We have the, uh, we have the oddest uh, perception of him, but they change, they're not all the same, but uh, we are to reflect who Christ is. And the only way we can do that is to know Him. Come to the Scriptures and know what Jesus did. Come and read what He did when He was living here on earth. To know what He said. To learn what He said, what He did. And to... Uh, even think of the stories that Jesus told. There are so many of them. Our call is really to reflect, reflect the, the character of Christ. When we think of the character of Christ, we, we think of His humility. The Bible speaks about His humility. He humbled Himself. He came to earth. He became a man. Uh, we reflect His confidence. He moves through life no matter what was going on around Him with a sense of well-being and confidence. He had respect for the people He met. Each of the stories where Jesus reached out and met somebody and some of those were not good people, they were, they were missing. There were people who misbehaved, yet He showed respect. Like Zacchaeus, come down from the tree. You know, I, want to, I want to spend some time with you. Uh, we, we we can get a sense of his grace, his his giving of himself, and his kindness uh, to the people around him. We reflect his kindness. You know, Jesus was extremely kind. We read the Old Testament about the loving kindness of God, and we have him, I think, on the loving kindness of God. Jesus was kind of, and so uh, for a little while this morning, just to help us get in touch with these characteristics of Jesus, I would like for us to reflect on his kindness a bit. Uh, when, we re when we reflect or consider, uh, reflect on or consider Christ's kindness, we have all these stories, we have him dealing with little children, little 